Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's November 30th. These are your headlines. Wachusett Reservoir has been giving up some really good shallow water lake trout fishing this week. Also, still some striped bass north of Cape Cod. And big talk of around, the bite just won't quit. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. Before we begin, we've got a few news items for you guys, and the first one is a reminder about two striped bass meetings that are taking, bass, taking place over the next seven days. The first one is actually tonight. This is the Rhode Island meeting. It's going to be at URI at their Corliss Auditorium. The address for that is 215 South Ferry Road in Narragansett, Rhode Island. It's going to run from 6 to 8 p.m., and this is the first time in a long time we haven't had a virtual option. Could be a strategic move. Who knows? Um, but we need, we need all anglers to be there. It's important that everybody's voices are heard uh, so that this decision can be made correctly. You know, and, and with input from everybody, that's the whole point of these meetings is to get public input. So if you can take a couple hours out of your day and get down there and make sure your voice is heard, that would be great. Uh, there's also one on Tuesday in Buzzards Bay. This, of course, is a Massachusetts meeting. This one runs from 6.30 to 8.30, and it's at the Mass Maritime Academy at their Admiral Hall, which is on 101 Academy Drive in Buzzards Bay, Massachusetts. Um, so go and check those out and make sure your voice is heard. These things are typically standing room only, and they get kind of contentious at times, so uh, promises to be entertaining and informative. Uh, so check those out. Next up, we're going to get a quick rundown of what's going on in the Dreamboat Challenge this week. We had only one entry in the final week of the Dreamboat Challenge. Joseph Yam of Flushing, New York landed this 8.91 pound tog, putting him in fifth place for the category and shaving one point off of Kyle Krause's second place score. The top three looks like this. Norman Bouchard holds third place with 17 points. Kyle Kraus sits just outside first place with 31 points. And Bobby Cifarelli appears poised to win with 33 points. This is the last week of the tournament, but these results will not be final until after a 10-day grace period and the winner has passed the polygraph test. The Dreamboat Fishing Challenge is the fisherman subscriber-only multi-species fishing competition with a chance to win a 21-foot Steigercraft Center console powered by Yamaha, along with many other great prizes. Visit thefisherman.com to subscribe and get all the details so you can be part of the action. Now let's check out the latest installment of Jenny Ackerman's Open Boat. Here it is. Hey everyone, welcome to this week's open boat. It's December, it's snowing right now, and we're still catching stripers. It's snowing it's, for sure. Yeah, it's snowing. So if you watched any of the previous open boats on proper fall run attire, this, then you're all set. Get out here. We're on a six sand eel bite right now, and I'll show you some footage on why you should be out here still fishing. Let's get them. <laughs> on sand eels so the season isn't over yet get out there and catch them up now I just want to talk about the December issue which I actually have right here in my hand uh, before I even get into it this is one of my favorite covers maybe since I've come back to the fisherman just a great great shot by Max and if you're wondering this is actually Lauren Finch this is Max's wife Max is the guy who gives us our Western sound report at the end of the video from Fisherman's World um, and just a great photo, great cover. But also, as you see here on the cover, 60 plus gifts for the New England ang angler. Um, this is sort of an old school gift guide. You know, we've got over 60 options here for New England fishermen. It covers everything. You've got electronics, you've got lures, you've got rods and reels, you've got apparel, you've got fillet knives, you've got all kinds of stuff in here. Um, and it's, you know, like I said, it's kind of old school. So you go through with your Sharpie, circle a couple things you want. Throw it where your significant other has their coffee in the morning and, you know, drop a not-so-subtle hint. Um, it's a really great way to make sure you get exactly what you want. 
Also, in this issue, it's just, it's, you know, it's, it's a really diverse issue. You've got another uh, one of our field correspondents, East End Eddie, did a story on uh, observations from the canal. He does this every December. It's always a great story, always a great read. So you want to check that out. You got a thing about using NOAA resources to find new fishing spots. It's really, really cool. Um, shows you how to use these very interesting and comprehensive, but also complicated uh, tools that NOAA puts out there for the public to use. Um, we've got an article written by me about uh, what El Nino will mean for fishing over the winter and beyond. Uh, it was really fun to write. Hopefully you'll find that one informative. Then we've got one by Max Finch, all about the Housatonic River and how to fish it from shore and the boat during the wintertime to catch striped bass. And then we have our elder statesman, Charlie Soares, and um, you know this is, this is memories from the 1950s of what it used to be like, what, you know, what it used to be like for fishermen. And, um, you know, it's, it sort of has a wholesome holiday twist. Definitely something that you'll want to check out. Uh, really, really great read from Charlie and just an overall really good issue. Lastly, we're going to talk about the giveaway. We're going to wrap up the Todd Jig giveaway. Um, got a lot of photos out of this one, which is really great. Uh, kind of came down to two really good ones, and ultimately I picked this one by Luis Feliciano. I just feel like... It really exemplifies tog season. Those are some really nice tog. Take it from the kayak. And, um, you know, it just, that just really caught my eye. So I'm going to be contacting him over the next day or two. We'll get those jigs out to him. And then we have the longer giveaway, which is this lure pack here. It's got all kinds of stuff in there. Um, and this one's going to wrap up at the end of January. So the last Wednesday in January will be your last day to submit photos. And uh, you guys know the drill by now. But just in case, it's got to be you holding a fish. It's got to be a recently caught fish. And uh, other than that, it doesn't matter. It could have been caught on vacation, could have been caught in your backyard, ice fishing, surf fishing, whatever. Uh, send them in to me at deanderson at thefisherman.com or text them to the number on the screen. Just make sure you give me the pertinent details, like where the fish was caught, your name, and any other little things you might want to tell me about the catch. And then also put giveaway or contest in the subject line just so I know what it's for. We'll get you entered and we'll pick a new winner at the end of January. Moving over into the reports now, we're going to start doing things just a tiny little bit different uh, as we go through the winter because it's going to be so much emphasis on freshwater fishing through the winter. And, you know, because so much of New England is sort of in the same climate band, it's really, I'll, it's going to be redundant if I have to keep saying that, you know, the largemouth fishing has been good in Mass, Rhode Island, and Connecticut. So we're going to do just a sort of a synopsis of the freshwater fishing as a whole, and then we'll sort of highlight places as we go through the regions. Uh, so this week, we're hearing about two distinct things. First, chart fishing has been exceptionally good. Um, all three southern New England states, Connecticut, Rhode Island, and Mass, all do a great job stocking, and um, that's translating to some really, really good fishing uh, throughout the whole region. This is a really good time of year to target trout with artificial lures. You can do it with bait, but it's a really good time of year to do it with artificial lures. Also, when we get these cold snaps, it seems to turn these trout on. Uh, my favorite way to get it done is to throw small to medium sized jerk baits, so like two to three inch jerk baits. I really like brightly colored baits at this time of the year, or really for any time fishing for stock trout. Uh, these trout don't have the same kind of instincts as wild fish. They grew up in a swimming pool practically. Um, so they have never really had to fight for their food, but they do still have this sort of raw, um, you know, uh, it's just sort of this raw instinct to hunt things that move. And if you give them something that they can find really easily, like something bright orange, like something chartreuse, a lot of times it allows them to home in on the bait and um, you know, can make for some really, really great fishing. So that's a little tip from me. Um, the trout fishing has been really good across the region. Got some salmon in there. We got some big trout on the Cape. Um, so a lot of options for those of you that want to chase the uh, salmonid uh, species out there. The other thing that's been really good is the largemouth bass fishing. Uh, it's been mostly finesse applications have been getting it done. So suspending jerk baits have been re working really well. I really like to fish sunnier days at this time of the year, and I like to fish the middle of the day. So like 10 o'clock in the morning to like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. That tends to be the best time. 
Uh, the, only, the other thing besides a sunny day is uh, right ahead of a front coming in. You know, if we get those high gray clouds and you can sort of feel the wind changing, uh, it's another time I do really well uh, for largemouth. The other thing that's working well for a lot of guys is uh, these finesse applications like hair jigs, like um, net rigs, like those Demiki rigs. Anything that's able to be fished slow and small um, is really getting it done right now. And um, last thing we'll mention, you know, this could go in the mass report, but it's it's a destination place, so we'll talk about it now. Wachusett Reservoir has been seeing really good lake trout action. A lot of these fish are up in the shallows. Uh, lake trout will happily take a jerk bait, by the way. Uh, you can get them on cast masters and all different crocodiles and all different kinds of tins, uh, as well as shine, shiners. And uh, a lot of guys like to inflate their shiners there too, which works really well. Um, Wachusett used to be my stomping grounds. I used to fish Wachusett sometimes five days a week. And um, I'm really excited to see that they've extended this season. I don't know if that's how new that is. I haven't been following Wachusett that closely, but I saw that they pushed it out to December 31st. It used to be November 30th, so we've got a whole other month of fishing. And, um, you know, I think, I think that's going to translate to some really good opportunities. So um, that's something else that I think is really worth checking out. Uh, for your freshwater guys, and uh, now we're going to jump over into the regional reports. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. Now, believe it or not, there have been some striped bass on the north shore of Massachusetts. I cannot believe it myself. And I was talking to James this morning, and he said that he missed it, but a few of his friends got in on you know, what were basically just schoolies running through, but that's a late run of schoolies for Plum Island. For a little bit more on that, let's toss it over now to Jim himself. I did get out, got some fishing done, got some bass on perch. I didn't find any pike. That's a little bit of a bummer, but gotta keep trying. Uh, latest word is that I had someone send me a report that they had a school of fish out on the ocean front passing by over the weekend uh, there were smaller fish but it was probably one final push of schoolies now they did say that the pod was not overly big but who knows it could have been i was not out but they were so uh no pictures. They don't want to send me any pictures, so <laughs> it's a tough bummer like that. But uh, the holdover striper season is upon us. I know a few guys that got out and found some, you know, small fish, nothing big. But we'll see what happens. I'm not really a holdover guy. Uh, but it's getting colder and colder, so we'll be looking forward to some ice season soon. I'm going to be off uh, the about a month now I'll be in the woods not doing much fishing uh, but if you're out target some structure for sure bridge abutments tree downs all kinds of stuff a little deeper water a little slower presentation coming out of Plum Island I don't have any other striped bass reports along the you know Boston metro area at all uh, there are a few boats heading offshore for uh, Haddock and Pollock and I know there's a few guys chomping at the bit for the tuna season to reopen on December 1st. Maybe we'll have some tuna reports next week. I don't have anything to tell you uh, that's new about tuna, though. Getting down closer to the canal, kind of interesting. There has been a school of striped bass that's been hanging outside the canal. They've been there for over a week. Um, I do wonder if the hard winds over the last couple of days pushed them through. I made some calls today to see if anyone knew, and uh, no one had anything to tell me definitively, so... As of right now, uh, proceed with caution, but there were striped bass out there. There was a blitz in the east end on Saturday morning. Crazy stuff. Uh, these fish are small, 18 to 24 inches with a few like up to 26. Um, but it's been top water action and those fish have been going in and then going back out. And they have not gone through uh, as far as I know. Also, heard about some big stripers out on the outer beaches. Um, just one day last week, uh, the, some big bunker came in on the beach and there were some big stripers on them. Uh, those fish are more than likely long gone, but it's worth noting because it just sort of highlights or illustrates 
you know, what is possible? You know, these, these crazy things happen. And, um, you know, if you're not out there giving it a shot, you're going to miss out on it. And uh, I think most of the Cape guys probably did miss out on that. But it's an interesting, an interesting point on the, uh, you know, on the chart of the season right there. So thought I wanted to, thought I should mention that. Uh, freshwater fishing on the Cape has been probably some of the best freshwater fishing we're seeing throughout the entire region. Trout fishing has been very good. I've been hearing about more of those big brown trout that they stock in the springtime. Uh, they've been starting to chew a little bit more. And the largemouth bass fishing has been very good across the whole area. The jerk bait bite especially has been good for largemouth. And we've seen some nice smallmouth too for guys throwing like hair rigs and Ned jigs. Um, <laughs> hair jigs and Ned rigs, I should say. And, um, you know, in places like Peter's Pond or Mashpee Wake Bee or some of the other ones that have smallmouth in them. Uh, but the bite's been decent. And then once you get out into Buzzards Bay, um, you know, togging's still been pretty good. They've been getting some tog like up to the Maritime Academy. Um, there's been some tog along the Elizabeths, but not a lot of guys out there chasing them. Talked to Jason Colby. He said there's still plenty of tog in Westport, but he's been out looking for codfish, and they've been really hard to come by, so he's going to wrap up his season. And that's what I have for you guys in Massachusetts this week. Jumping over into Rhode Island, um, everybody seems to be concentrating on TOG, and with good reason. I mean, it's not a free-for-all. There's been, the TOG has been really good. The fish have only recently moved out of the shallows, so you've gone from like 20 to 35 feet of water. Now they're out more like 45 to 90 feet of water. Um, and for the guys that move around and try all the different pieces of structure until they find some fish, they're doing quite well. We're hearing about a lot of 9 to 12 pound fish being caught just about every day. Um, this is the second year in a row where we've seen this. So either these charter guys are starting to figure it out or this tog fishing is just getting better and better. As you get further out, closer to Block Island, you're going to start seeing more codfish. And once you get south of Block, you'll start getting into more sea bass. Uh, on the eastern side of the state, stripers have been pretty scarce. Um, I think that there are fewer fishermen than there are fish, though. There's definitely still striped bass moving through, just not a lot of guys out fishing for them. For a little bit more on what's going on in the eastern half of Rhode Island, let's toss it over now to TJ Kopecki. Hey guys, uh, got a quick video for you, uh, fishing reports, and uh, just some quick information uh, from the East Bay area of Rhode Island and uh, some of the southeastern mass, Swansea. Um, I do see a little bit of slowdown in some of the uh, Tatog fishing. I feel that the fish have started to migrate out uh, into their real deeper water. Um, I talked to my friend Todd, who uh, is a kayak fisherman out of Newport, and uh, he said that the, the bite actually slowed down before the, uh, the moon. Um, and normally, you know, the, the fishing would pick up by then, but uh, said that the, the bite had slowed down quite a bit. And I uh, wasn't getting the fish that he normally would. Uh, he did get into some cod uh, inside of Newport Harbor which is a, a good sign. Uh, always nice, that's always a good gift uh, to catch uh, a keeper card, uh, a mix of your sea bass and the tog fishing. Um, I do have one more outing, maybe myself, maybe two uh, to get out there. I know it's getting hard to find some crabs around here in the East Bay. Uh, I did see a couple of posts on social media from Sam's Bay and Tackle that this would be there last week. Uh, I do have a call out to Manny at Lucky Bait uh, just to find out what he's going to be doing for uh, for crabs and uh, what the uh, if you can get them there also. So I will let you guys know and keep you posted. Um, myself this week, I I transitioned just a little bit into some freshwater fishing, and I got to tell you the ponds around here. Uh, I fished Milford Pond. Uh, I fished the Warren Reservoir. All good spots. Um, I had a fish the afternoon though. I did try to fish in the morning, uh, but there was skim ice. So um, the most of the spots that I fish had a lot of skim ice on them. I couldn't cast. So I waited till the afternoon for that ice to melt. 
and I'll tell you, I get it on a good bite. Uh, I get on a really good crappy bite in Milford Pond in Swansea, uh, which is located behind Target. And uh, I gotta tell you, I was using the, uh, the gulp smelts in the three and the four inch in the watermelon color. And uh, I just pretty much stuck them underneath a, uh, a baba like you would a fish in a worm or a shiner. And I, it was lights out crappie fishing. Uh, I actually took a couple for a table fair. They're really good to eat. And I uh, had some nice fish tacos. So uh, fresh water is good. Uh, my friend Jeff Sullivan has been doing really well in some of the local ponds with white perch and some big ones to boot. I got to tell you, New England itself and like probably half the East Coast has a really good, great white fishery, uh, white perch fishery. Uh, so, and if you're out there fishing them, there's a variety of ways to catch them. Uh, we like to fish with uh, little bucktails or a little small three, uh, two and a half to three inch uh, paddle tails. They work really good. There's a variety of things that work. Uh, if you saw a lot of my videos from last year talking about white perch, uh, we actually had a little competition, me and Jeff, to see who could catch the most perch on different lures. Uh, and once you get them on the feed bag and they're chewing, it's, it's lights out. They're all schooled up together. And if you can find the school of them, it's, it's going to be great fishing. Uh, so if you're out and about, there's also some trout, some, uh, some salmon around, um, all good stuff to fish for. So, uh, like I said, with the salt around here inside the bay in the rivers, it's slowed down. There's no fish. I don't think you might get into a couple of little small ones or some, uh, some oyster toad fish if you want to fish for them, but there's plenty of those around. Let me tell you this year. And, uh, but if you want to resort back to the freshwater, there's some really good freshwater going on right before the ice gets in. And, uh, that's all we got for you from the, uh, from the East Bay area. So, uh, we'll catch up with you next week and I uh, hope you all had a nice Thanksgiving. Now heading out into the Point Judith area, um, again, the bottom fishing has been pretty good and it's been good in that area as well. It's been surprisingly good, I should say, uh, once you get into the right depth of water. For a little bit more on all that, let's toss it over now to Captain John Lee from JL Charters. We have had a lot of pretty strong westerly breezes the past five days. I haven't been out that much. I got out before the wind, kind of ran offshore a bit and uh, looking for codfish. Didn't really find much on cod. Had a lot of good sea bass and then came up inside, did a blackfish drop, did okay on the blackfish. It seems like guys are still catching blackfish, but that's going to be pushing further out now, at least in Rhode Island. Um, I'm, I'm pulling the boat out. I'm going to put in, I'm going to cut the decks up and put some new fuel tanks in. So I hope to get maybe two or three more trips. Um, and then I'm going to call it as far as little things that I've heard there, um, in December in Rhode Island, we get some whiting that come up fairly close. Um, you know, I don't know anyone who's targeting whiting rod and reel, but the, uh, the commercial guys are catching some pretty nice whiting right now. Um, there's some butterfish around. I haven't really seen any herring to speak of. Uh, the gannets are few and far between. I see them every day, but we all have seen big gannet shows, and I have not seen a gannet show in Rhode Island. Um, anyway, I'll be up with you next week. Take care. Have a good one. Now, rounding the Harbor Refuge out to South County. There are striped bass along the beaches. They've been mostly small. It's been much more sporadic over the last week. And the breachways have been slow. So most of these fish are, you know, being caught just sort of running along the beaches and uh, mostly being caught from shore. And the only other piece of news I have from Rhode Island is I did see um, one of my old friends got a Benito on November 26th. That is pretty late for a Benito, but I thought that was a a cool point to put across and just sort of uh, probably be the last hardtail of the year. Uh, cool catch, and um, that's what I have for you guys right now this week. Jumping across into Connecticut, there have been striped bass up in the Thames River, up to slot size. Not a lot of guys fishing for them, though. 
Uh, tog season is over in Connecticut, so that's going to see most of the boats getting pulled out of the water. Whatever were left in the marinas are now gone. Uh, you got stripers around the Niantic Bay. And if you want to get in with some bottom fishing action, you can hop on the Sunbeam or the Black Hawk and go out looking for cod and sea bass. These guys know what they're doing. This is what they do. They're going to keep fishing for these species all the way till the end of the year. Um, you know, it takes all the pressure off of you. You know, you pay a few bucks. You don't have to steer the boat. You don't have to look for a spot. They tell you when to drop the lines, and uh, they know what they're doing. So you're going to get in on some fish. And um, if last year is any kind of an indication, it's going to be worth it. So um, it's definitely something worth trying out uh, over the next month. So definitely get in on that. As we get closer to the Connecticut River, you know, striped bass in the Connecticut River are mostly holdovers at this point. So you find them up in the tributaries. Uh, there probably are still some fish out on the sand shoal, although I haven't heard a definitive report uh, since the last time I talked to somebody about it. That's an eel bite, and it typically lasts into early December, so I'm sure there are probably still some fish there. For a little bit more on all that, let's toss it over now to Captain Mike Roy from Real Cast Charters. Hey guys, for this week's fishing report, uh, blackfish season officially closed yesterday in Connecticut. Uh, from what I heard, uh, the fish were still biting pretty good in certain areas, um, but uh, that is closed up until next season. Um, so really, the uh, striped bass fishing, what we're getting right now this time of year is we get the winter holdovers that start to move up into the estuaries where they're going to spend the winter. Um, <clears throat> they're biting pretty good right now because it hasn't gotten so cold where they're lethargic yet. Uh, so they're going to hit soft plastics really well. Probably the best uh, lure to use right now is like a 5-inch or 5 and 3 quarter inch finesse fish where you got a half ounce jig head. Um, <clears throat> there's also some hickory shad around too, so don't be surprised if you, if you get into some shad. Good luck. And now heading out of the river to the west to take a quick stop in Westbrook and check in with Matt Stone from Black Hall Outfitters. So guys, this is Matt here at Black Hall Outfitters in Westbrook with this week's fishing report. Uh, tog season officially closed recently, so we are now into kind of the, whether you're transitioning into trout uh, for or salmon for fresh water um, for the winter, or whether you like to chase down those holdovers, uh, holdover stripers over the winter, um, it is the season. Uh, right now, there's still a lot of holdover stripers entering tidal creeks and rivers. There's still birds um, moving around in those areas. I was out yesterday and saw birds diving um, so they're still there. Um, it's definitely something that's going to taper off pretty quickly uh, as these temps keep dropping. It's 37 degrees here right now in central Connecticut, definitely cold. Um, so uh, that's kind of the bite right now. We're kind of uh, entering kind of the winter season. Um, time to keep your eyes out for uh, anything you might want to upgrade over the season, any reels that need some new line or repair, um, anything like that. And uh, that's what's going on here in central Connecticut. The further west you get from the river, uh, the better the fishing seems to be getting. Um, there are bluefish out in the western sound, not a ton of them, but they're big. I uh, heard about a few schoolies being bitten in half. The Housatonic has got fish moving in. The, in fact, the entire river has striped bass right now. And we've seen some really nice fish coming out of the upper river from the surf guys throwing soft plastics. Um, and the guys fishing around the mouth are finding some good ones as well. For a little bit more on all the things going on in the Western Sound, let's toss it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. This past week, the stripers are still along our beaches. Diamond Jig and 11B and 28C has been good. And there's still a lot of bass in our harbors and our estuaries keying on, you know, the peanut bunker still flooding out. And then we've seen some bigger fish with the shad moving in and starting to go up the tidal rivers. The Housatonic is off to a good start. There's a lot of fish in the mouth all the way up to the bridges. And there's some bigger fish that made their way up towards the dam. And guys are cashing in some mid 20 pound fish on SPs, you know, big swim shads, trying to imitate the shad that's running up that river. On the freshwater side, the Saugatuck is fishing really well. We're, you know, we're really stocked up on shiners. That's a good bait this time of year. Other than that, you can throw crocodiles and then small jigs. We've seen a lot of walleye, bass, and a couple of really decent trout in the five pound range. Thanks and good luck. And that's what I have for you guys this week in the reports. Hopefully it's going to inspire you to get out there. I know it's pretty much December. I know it's been cold, but there's still lots of fishing opportunities out there, especially if you fish freshwater. But also, the fact that there are still striped bass in the Cape Cod Canal tells you that, you know, there's lots of opportunity out there still uh, for the saltwater fishermen. And the togging has been awesome in Rhode Island. 
If you're not a subscriber to The Fisherman, I highly recommend you head over to our website. That's thefisherman.com. It's going to give you a full taste of what we cover. We cover the entire region from Delaware all the way up to Maine and every angling discipline you can think of that could be done in that region. There are articles to cover it all. We've got reports to cover it all. We have three editions of which you get access to all three. And whichever one you select, hopefully it's New England because that's mine, uh, the one that I run, you're going to get 12 of these sent to your house every month. And during the fishing season, from April to November, you're going to get 26 digital editions that look just like these. They're just not made out of paper. Um, sent to your email box every week during the fishing season with a complete set of reports. If you're still not interested after all that, and I forgot to say, it's only 30 bucks. I mean, that's a great holiday gift for somebody, and it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. But if you're still not interested, at the very least, give us a like and subscribe here on YouTube and hit that little bell thing down there so you get a notification every time we post something new. Appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.